you have a carboxyl group here, you have two carbons, and you have a phyllate molecule. And now we need two more molecules, so now we have a phyllate. So you're each going to be pretty much identical. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is the transacylase reaction, right? This is happening now in the condensing part of the enzyme, the condensing unit. You know what? Let me just put that. I'm going to put that up on the I'm going to show you right where we're starting. That's why I'm putting this up. Go back to the beginning here. Arms getting tight. I didn't put weights on this year. We're starting here. Looking at the condensing enzyme, where acetyl-CoA is going to come in and bind to the condensing enzyme. So when that happens, the coenzyme A, sorry, all right, here's the first one. So the CoA goes. Right? So you drop the CoA, you join up with the condensing enzyme. Hold your hand. <laughs> Right? So you now have a phenol to We lost the coa. So this is consider this is the omega end of the fatty acid. This is the beginning of the change from the methyl end. Now, at this side, we, on the other side of the enzyme, we have this acyl carrier protein that has to bind to the malonyl group. So acetyl-CoA carboxylase has done its thing, has made a malonyl CoA, and now a malonyl CoA is coming in to acyl carrier protein. And you're going to lose your CoA too, because we have a transacylase reaction, right? So we've gotten the CoA off and put the ATP on. So those hands are actually sulfidal groups. <laughs> it's a sulfidal bond. Now, this is where the action happens because this is the condensation. So now, this is the highly reactive carboxyl group that's going to be lost, that's going to drive this reaction to a condensation. So, through the action of the condensing enzyme, this bond is broken. Condensing enzyme is not free. You can go do your thing. <laughs> and now you join up, but she loses her carboxyl group, right? That's what drives the reaction forward. So now how many carbons do we have? One, two, three, four. We have a four carbon chain. Don't want to forget this next That one counts. So that, it was the decarboxylation that brought them together. Now this is our dead end right here. Unless we get these guys have to be off of the ATP so the next malleal coa can come in. We only have one ATP per chain, right? So they are going to cleave off the sulfide bond. We're going to move back to the, to the condensing enzyme. You have this bastard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you still have a sulfide bond here, but now you're on the, on the condensing enzyme, and ATP is now free to accept the next malleal coa. You, you have to keep your you have to keep your carboxyl group the same, man. Yeah? You can put your co-ed, but you keep this. This is going to be the next side of the conversation. So now, back, remember, we started with just an acetyl group here. Now we have a four carbon group. These guys are coming off again. Let's clean this bond. This is the next round now. So now this is the second condensation. You lose your CoA and your uh, carboxyl group. Mm -hmm. So you keep it decarboxylated. We have another condensation, and now we have six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And condensing enzymes all alone again. And now we have to bring in the next. Now we have CoA. 
So again, these guys, uh, the whole chain now are migrating back to the condensing enzyme. So originally it was a acetyl group here, then it was a butyryl group. Now we have six carbons sitting here, waiting to condense. You have to lose your coa. Okay. One well, has to bond. And now the malatine, the malamine is always where the two carbons are coming from. The new two carbons are always coming from the malamine. They're not coming from that original acetyl carbon. And these guys were all made by the acetyl carbon So now, finally, this whole thing comes off the condensing enzyme again and condenses with the malonyl group on the ACL carrier protein, decomposition, and now we have an eight carbon chain. So, of course, I would, if I was playing as far as the reduction, reducing module, we do the keto acyl reductase, the hydrogen acyl reductase, get rid of the keto group and hydroxyl group, the double bond. Now they're saturated. So we have an eight carbon saturated fatty acid. And use your imagination and pretend we did this a bunch more times and got to 16 carbons. Then ultimately the phyloids would come in, break that bond, and let the fatty acid go off all the way. So the key is to remember that transmigration of the growing chain back to the condensing enzyme to make room for the new malonyl coa to always come in as an acyl carrier. That is the point that usually confuses people. How that work? So that's it. I think you guys. Have